will go five points clear at the top of the Premier League. Martinelli with two goals in two games. A hard-fought win. A very, very hard-fought win for the Gooners. That can't be denied. It wasn't the most exhilarating game in terms of goals. It was a very good football match, though. If you're a purist, if you understand the game, today was brilliant. Arsenal were the aggressors for large parts. Leicester didn't fancy opening up against them. Of course they didn't. But every time they countered Leicester, Arsenal getting back into shape, their work rate in those positions was nothing short of exceptional. And there's one thing that I heard Gary Neville say the other day, which I thought held a bit of water. And he hasn't said much about Arsenal this year, which I think has held water. And that was Arsenal need to get back to getting clean sheets. Arsenal need to get back to being difficult to break down and difficult to score goals against. And that should be, for Arsenal fans, the most pleasing part of today. It didn't matter what Leicester did, they created nothing. There was one ball to the back post from Harvey Barnes, which I think Tete was fairly close to getting onto. That was it. They had one shot from, I think it was Jusby Hall, that went narrowly wide. Outside of that, this is one of the best Arsenal performances defensively you've seen this season. Every time Leicester tried to counter it in the first half, they had three or four where it was 3v3, 4v3. Arsenal got back into shape. They cut off all the passing angles, all the openings, and they stopped Leicester. And we saw in the last two games for Leicester City, when there's space for them to run into against Man United in the first half, and of course for the whole game against um, Tottenham, they punished them. They didn't, they didn't punish Man United. They didn't score. They bloody should have done. David De Gea kept us in this game. It was an excellent performance from that point of view from Arsenal. Martinelli getting back on the short score sheet. Why is that so key? Besides from winning you the game, which is a very obvious thing to say, this man had a really poor start to 2023. But it wasn't going to last. All young players had these ebb and these flows in form. Example being today, Saka was dangerous, but wasn't at his brilliant best. But other people stepped up. I wouldn't expect Saka to go a whole, whole month. He's one of the best wingers in world football. But watching Martinelli today, took his goal brilliantly, run into that. He, 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 he didn't just run into space and put the ball in the back of that. He hunted that space out. He saw where the opening would be. He reacted quicker than the defence. He put it away, almost picked up an injury in the process as well. Very important goal for him, his confidence, his form moving forward. Because Arsenal were going to need him. They, they can't become reliant on Saka being the only guy that gets the important goals, the equalizers and the winners. More players have to step up and get involved in relation to that. But overall, as I say, this was an excellent performance from Arsenal, although the game was only 1-0, because they've conceded a lot of, of, of goals recently. They have. But you can win games through conceding, but performance is the key. Performances are your bread and butter, and today was a brilliant performance um, as, as a team. It really, really was. Uh, this year says, Terry, I wonder how they, they saw Ben White's free kick, but not the penalty on Saka. Listen, um, the way I look at it is this. Goalkeepers get more protection than they probably should. Ben White was holding the goalkeeper's arm. That's going to stop the goalkeeper from jumping. If VAR sees it, they're going to give it because goalkeepers get protecting. Was it a foul on Saka? No, I don't think it. I don't think Bruno was a foul the other day on Balde. I think it's a, it's a pull, it's a tug but it isn't enough to give away a penalty. So I'm going to maintain my integrity and say no penalty. Do I understand why the goal was disallowed? Ben White had hold of the goalkeeper's arm. Whenever you touch a goalkeeper, if it's seen, it's given. If the referee would have seen that in real time, he'd have blown his whistle. So I understand why that was done. Um, I get what you're saying. Uh, are you blind? Uh, and that's not about being blind. I don't think they're big enough fouls personally. That's just my view. So I'm not going to say Bruno's wasn't the other day and then come on here and say Saka's was. That would make me a hypocrite. And remember, hypocrites go to the lowest form of hell. Study religion. Uh, scrappy final 20 minutes, but defensively sound. I don't think Leicester had a shot on target. Saliba, barring one sloppy pass, won all his duels. Yeah, and I think they only got scrappy. Um, I sort of feel like it was scrappy in terms of Leicester committing stupid fouls. Leicester actually played into Arsenal's hands in that second half. They were giving away fouls. They were slowing play down. They were really stupid. And Leicester just couldn't create anything. And I laughed towards the end. They couldn't even get balls into the box. I don't know why. It was, I, didn't, 
I, I did and I didn't want them to score. Like there was part of me that wanted them to because, you know, I want United to get as close to the top as possible. But there was a part of me that just thought, you don't deserve it. Please don't get this ball into the box. You literally deserve nothing today, Leicester, because you've played poorly. You've been shut out. And every time you've had a moment for some quality, you've been terrible. Uh, one nil, nine nil, three points is three points. Come on, you gooners. And come on, Bournemouth. Well, this is the point. That kicks off in half an hour. Pressure now on Manchester City. They have to win. Any slip up today from City gives such an advantage to Arsenal, who play their game in hand on Wednesday night against Everton. Now, you say Bournemouth are easy. Maybe. But Nottingham Forest are meant to be easy. I mean, Nottingham Forest have just been battered 4-0 by West Ham. So anything can happen in football. Anything at all. Uh, in the words of Harry Kane, let's go! <laughs> uh, it was accidental, but a clear-cut penalty. And you can believe that. For me, I, I, again, I, I can't keep answering it. I'm going to say the same. I'm gonna just going to refer to my previous answer on that. But you'll see me be consistent at all times. Again, what I'm saying about Ben White, I, goalkeepers can jump put their knees through the back of a player, almost fracture, fracture ribs, bust bust arms, no, no fouls given. When you touch a goalkeeper, it's a foul. I don't think it was a foul, but I understand why it was given. If I don't think it should be given to the goalkeeper, I can't think Saka should be given. That's real man's logic, as in, I'm not going to yield on my integrity to win an argument. That's, that's what b do, and I'm not a b It's as simple as that. It's a bitch thing to do. Uh, Terry loves to be consistently wrong. It's not about being consistent. People always say that to me. It's not. I just don't think they're big enough fouls. I don't think they should be given. But what I don't do, whether you think I'm wrong or not, you don't see me suddenly say when it's my club, oh, I should have a big gay friend. I maintain my integrity. So I may be wrong in your opinion, but I'm integral with it. Uh, should Klopp be sacked if Liverpool continue to lose matches any longer? I'll come back to this a bit later, bro. We're talking Arsenal right now. I'll save that and come back to that later in the show. Uh, Terry, why do you never do watch-alongs? Because they're not my thing. You know, they're not what I enjoy. I like to actually watch the games rather than, and not really have people watching me. I like to actually watch and study the games. I sit here with notepads and books, writing stuff down, studying the game so I can talk about it. I, I don't see how someone can do a watch-along and your job is to entertain your viewers and then do a match review. Um, I, I, I just something I struggle with. I don't really like it. I, I don't dislike watch-alongs. I just don't like doing them personally. Simple as that. Personal choice. Uh, Trossard should start every game from now on. Now, at least I think that's Jim from American Pie. Very premature. And I say that because he was very good today. Should have scored a goal. He did score a very, very good goal. He, you know, he had no issue. You know, his goal didn't happen because of the foul. It, it happened because it was a brilliant shot. Horses for courses. I think Arsenal need to make themselves a little bit more unpredictable. So a little bit more variation, a little bit more change and rotation, especially with the Europa League turning. It's harder to be worked out that way. So I think you should definitely start some games, but to start every game from now on, I think it's a little bit too much. Jesus coming back soon as well. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Uh, Ozzy Guna here. Where's he at? I saw a comment from him and I wanted to put it up and it's just, it does this sometimes stream. I lose people. Um, I've done watch alongs. It's hard. You never really get to watch the game. Yeah. And I want to watch the game. Plus when there's no cameras, no mics, I want to be able to say what I want. Do you know what I'm saying? And sometimes I do stuff off camera when games are on. I don't want to get out on the internet. It would go viral, but I don't want to go viral for that. Like it's just my, my personal choice. I just don't want to go viral for losing my shit. Cause my team's losing or something. Um, I feel so embarrassed for having doubted Jorginho. <laughs> yeah. And it, all the gooners that doubted him but needed David Ornstein to make them happy about him, again, they should all be sorry for themselves. Grown men needing another man to help them formulate an opinion. Imagine that. Imagine you need another man to help you think. Crazy, isn't it? Your dad would be ashamed. My dad would be ashamed. But like, son, why do you need a journalist to tell you what, how to think or how to formulate an opinion? My, honestly, I wouldn't want to disappoint my father like that. Um, but there we go. Uh, Terry uh, off to collect again at the bookies on Arsenal. Uh, not really. Uh, Shane, thank you very, very much for becoming an official member of the Football Terrace. I appreciate that, bro. Thank you very much indeed. 
Uh, Jorginho is making Chelsea think a little now, eh? He is, as long as he's got quality around him, like most players need, right? He, as long as he's got some legs around him, Jorginho's great. If you put him with meaty players or slow players or bad technicians, it, it makes him look worse. And look at the Chelsea's midfield. Um, it's all about momentum now. Keep it rolling at home. Listen, Akil, I, I cannot imagine in a month of Sundays you dropping points to Everton, who, by the way, just got beat at home by Aston Villa. New manager bounces over. I cannot see. The only way you lose this game to Everton, legit, is player sent off and a penalty conceded in the first minute, and they score the penalty, and then another player sent off in the, in the following 10 minutes. You have to be down to nine men and a goal behind from the beginning to lose against Everton. I'm that sure Arsenal will win.